Hi, everybody. I'm Todd McKim, along with the coach, and welcome to week two of the 1995 campaign. As we take a look back at that come-from-behind victory over the Fighting Illini of Illinois, preview next week's game, the Pac-10 opener at the Rose Bowl against UCLA, and we will be joined later in the program by quarterback Ryan Perry-Smith. Well, Coach, uh, I'm not sure how many games like uh, the first two that we've had that the fans or maybe even I can take. I don't know about yourself, but twice you've come from behind from double-digit deficits to pick up victories. And uh, this one may be even more impressive than the opener in that you had to overcome five turnovers to win the ball game. We almost shot ourselves in the foot and didn't recover. And, and luckily, uh, you know, I'm getting a little older by the minute here. I'm hoping that we can make these things a little bit easier in the future. But I think it points to the character of this team and, and uh, what we brought from last season in terms of ability to come back, know we can do it, have some confidence, and play well. And, and we, we really did put our, five times and turn the ball over. And certainly deep in our territory was a tough thing. Our defense came back from that, overcame that, and uh, we put the ball in when we had to. I, I'm very pleased. If, if uh, I can breathe a sigh of relief, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, one of those games where you had to once again count on some unknown factors, some people that had not played very much football or any at all in the Oregon system to uh, make big plays, and that was the case. Uh, ironically, the biggest play of the game is made by Jaya Figueres, who might not even mm -hmm. have been in there had it not been injuries to the two starting safeties. No question. Uh, that, that play by Jaya, we, we talked about all week, the fact that some people would have to step up. I didn't expect our safeties to both go down in the same series, uh, but that's a play that uh, it's a, sort of a blitz. We call it smash black uh, from our Falcon package. Jaya comes in, beats the block, knocks the ball out himself, and then recovers it for the touchdown. It's a great individual play. It was a tremendous setting for college football, a capacity crowd, over 44,000 people, the largest uh, home crowd for an opener ever, a uh, great atmosphere on national television as well. Uh, let's start with the offense. Uh, Ryan Perry Smith got the start. Uh, Tony Graziani was unable to go. Tell us about that decision process and how it was made, uh, why it was made, and uh, from there on. Well, we, Tony was, uh, according to the trainers and doctors, they thought he would be ready. And uh, he took a few snaps on Wednesday, threw the ball a little bit, had some minor problems, uh, did not throw full speed, and they had decided to not let him throw Thursday or Friday. Uh, Saturday before the game, uh, we took him in the training room, loosened him up. He threw a tape roll, could do that, graduated to a softball, and could not throw that without pain. And we decided at that point, rather than risk anything, uh, we would hold him out with the idea that he'd get him healthy, make sure that he is for UCLA. Ryan Perry Smith uh, had been taking the reps as the first team guy, done a great job, really mentally and, and physically prepared himself well. And a lot of the things that occurred were not, we, we did not support him very well in that first half. Dropped some passes and didn't protect him as well as we could have. Uh, Illinois has one of the best defenses in the country. They have uh, some outstanding personnel, especially on the perimeter. Uh, so they obviously caused some problems. Simeon Rice and Kevin Hardy both made a number of big plays. They're great football players. They are pro football players. They'll go on to the next level. They could do it right now. <laughs> I wish they would have in a lot of respects, uh, but they're great. And we. Simeon Rice made some things happen. Kevin Harley certainly did. Their whole defense played well. They defended us very well, put some pressure on us. And, and sometimes when you try to take away one or two people on that defense, it allows other people to step up and make plays. And I think that happened to a degree last night. Field position in this game. You, you did not have good field position for most of the game. Some of it was your own doing, yeah. but also some of it was a special teams work. And I guess you have to tip your hat to guys like Joshua Smith picking uh, extra points. Uh, Josh Bidwell uh, came in that last punt. I mean, uh, I'm sure everybody was breathing a big sigh of relief when he boomed that one away. We had uh, some young people step up. Obviously, in our kicking game, uh, Josh Smith, Matt Brewer, Josh Bidwell, none of them have ever started a college game. Two of them have never played in a college game, let alone. And they kicked the ball, and it wasn't artistic at times, uh, but they got done what they had to do. Josh Bidwell, certainly that last punt was a pressure play uh, by a good athlete who responded to that situation. Uh, Josh Smith just came to us from Colorado and, and really filled the void, so we're happy he's here. And he's a walk-on, hasn't even attended a class yet, and uh, yeah, they had a big, important role in this game. Let's check out the Pac-10 scoreboard before we get to the first quarter highlights. As we take a look at Oregon State, they're losing for the first time this season to Pacific. We will see the Tigers here the first Saturday in the month of October. Arizona, earlier in the week, came from behind and upended Georgia Tech at home 20-19. Arizona State getting that offense all cranked up, 45-20 over UTEP. And uh, California loses for the second consecutive week. Fresno State coming from behind to win that one in Berkeley. Stanford Cardinal, 2-0 to start the season. 
That score looks familiar in Salt Lake City, same as the Oregon victory over the Utes. And USC, its first, uh, uh, first uh, game of the season, had no trouble at all with San Jose State. Washington State got by Montana 38 to 21, and we will see the Bruins next week at the Rose Bowl. Uh, they defeated BYU. They suffered a couple of injuries in that game. We'll detail those later on in the program. All right, let's get to the first quarter highlights. Oregon taking on the Fighting Illini, an evening contest at Autzen Stadium, a capacity crowd, and it was a lot of fun. As we pick up the action, the UC uh, uh, Illinois with the uh, road deficit, the fans. Uh, Loud, making plenty of noise. The Here crowd was un off. yeah. The crowd was unbelievable last night. Forty-four thousand people showing up, staying with us, making the noise. I, I would hate to come in here and play as an opponent. I guarantee you that. So Illinois starts at its own forty-four. They like to run the football at big, strong backs. Brian Jackson, Rich Rule jumping in there again. We did a nice job starting off. We knew they're going to try to run the ball. Troy Bailey making the play there. We knew we had to match them at the line of scrimmage with a physical style of play. Detroit coming in for the tackle. No gain on that one, so it's third and 13. We talked all week about having to contain Johnny Johnson, so we have two guys getting outside, make him throw the errant pass there. We start off, get Ricky Whittle, make a nice play there, run down the field and get a first first down. Always That first first down is very important to set the tempo for the offense. Get that thing going. Here we have Josh going out. This is the same play, and we run a in and out move by Ricky which sort of freezes a linebacker, and then he makes a couple moves there and, and gets going down the field. So it's a gain of 13. The next play we see is second down and four. They come at you now. There's uh, Ricky following Tossie out there, breaking off that block. It's our Bob Sweep series. It seemed to be a, a play that uh, you went to repeatedly during the game. It even worked for touchdowns. They, uh, they did a nice job of it. They really sold out on the onside. When they saw this play coming, some people were waiting to let it develop. These people attacked it, made it more difficult to run later in the game. In fact, uh, Ricky actually fumbled on a, a play like that later in the game as well. So it was a key play one way or the other. Bidwell coming in, uh, didn't quite get the fortuitous bounce. Touchdown. He needed to kick that one a little bit higher angle, but he's a young guy. He's, he's getting better. He can do that. This is a couple of series later as both teams are uh, unable to move it. It was a defensive struggle early. I, I really felt like, again, I felt that was okay because we were a little inexperienced. Ryan was feeling his way a little bit on the offensive side. And uh, there's Jeremy Asher making his presence known. He can get there in a hurry and deliver a blow. He did 18 times in this game. Yeah, he, he showed up. And uh, like I said, he, <laughs> he makes them feel it and make them pay the price. I think he was actually disappointed early. He had missed a couple of tackles, but boy, he sure did make up for it. Big play by Dante Lewis there, sniffing out the screen, coming in. They run a lot of these and actually hurt us with a couple later in a fake off of this, but Dante here beats the block, makes a great tackle. Good help there from Troy Bailey, and we got two other guys right around the football. So you get it back, and here comes your first sustained drive of the evening. Pulo got that one, unfortunately, kind of just at the sideline. Here we're on a little screen, same screen we scored on against Utah. Ricky using the block by Eric Reed. Getting out, breaking a tackle. You see the fake the draw here. This is that same play from the ground level. And then we have two receivers who crack inside. Nice job by Dameron Ricketts blocking down the field. And again, I said Eric Reed has become one of our best pull blockers and open field blocker. Big gain, 14 yards out to the 36. Coming now inside, what we call the load, the companion play to the bob. Uh, and we go back outside. Now we substituted, brought in Kevin Parker, and we have the halfback pass off the same action. Nice catch by Chris McNamara. Great adjustment to the ball. He sets us up. Good field position. Again, it's off the same look that we talked about. There's Tossie out front. And uh, it may not be the prettiest pass, but it got there. Great effort by Chris. He does a great job of adjusting to the ball, doesn't he? Yes. Didn't take long to put it in the end zone. Now that's a zone play again where we hit them outside, inside. Uh, Ricky hit that one up in there. Great bounces it outside and basically gets in the end zone almost untouched. Nice blocking there. You see Paul Wigan driving his man out. Great block sustaining that. Great downfield block by Kristen McLemore. And again, Ricky getting in the end zone. So the Ducks get the first points of the game. And your new kicker comes in to try to tack on the PAT. 
It, it was a little low, but it was there. And the bottom line is we got to see the FA. So you score first. You ended up scoring last. I guess that's all that's really important. Here comes Illinois again. Late first quarter. Big play here on a third and about one and a half. Yeah, we got caught inside. Uh, Alex Molden actually made the tackle. Probably should have filled up on the outside, but he, he does make up for the coming back. Later on, we, we get surprised by a fake screen. Uh, we've talked about this play. They've run seven screens a week before, and they ran a fake pass, and, and we got caught by it. Bo Sweet there for a second. First quarter score, Oregon 7, Illinois 7. We move into the second quarter. Highlights, uh, Coach, I do want to know that, uh, let you know that we have set a, a coaching show record for the fewest amount of highlights in a quarter in the second <laughs> quarter. <laughs> Let's get right to them and get through them uh, so we can get the exciting stuff in the second half. We start off, unfortunately, on a third and ten. They have pressure and force a fumble and recover deep in Oregon territory. And uh, unfortunately, that was Simeon Rice doing what he does best. I thought maybe uh, Ryan's arm was in motion, but the officials didn't see it my way. And then Johnny scrambles out there, Johnny Johnson, and we keep him, which doesn't allow him to get out there. Uh, Dan Green making some tackles again, Paul Jensen, Rich Rule. Yeah, your defense does a nice job. Uh, holds them, which is great. That's a, that's a tremendous thing for a defense to get a turnover that deep and make them only get a field goal, keep them out of the end zone. I was very proud of them in that regard. Good pressure, Ty Dother, the running back on the little screen, not much there, no gain. Second and 18. This was an issue. Their quarterback went the wrong way, but it looked like he audible and they, their backs did not pick up the audible. So Troy Bailey coming in did a nice job here because he's, he's tough to get in the open field. I'm glad that Troy got him. Big, big play. So it's a loss of eight, goes as a sack, you get the ball back. Unfortunately, disaster again. This was the only real mistake that Ryan made, and it was really because he had to hold the ball due to Simeon Rice being right in his face. We were running, working the same in and out move to Ricky. It didn't happen as quickly, so Ryan started to throw it over the top and unfortunately went right to Kevin Hardy. This time, the Illini take it in from the three, add on the extra point. No, it's blocked. And then Everybody kind of stopped there for a second. Yeah, I, was, I was hoping we'd sneak that one by. Our kids reacted pretty well. Uh, Isaac got a good job. I think it was blocked by Bryant Jackson. Great job by him and that interior line, uh, Mark Schmidt and Troy Bailey, pushing to allow him to come through, which was a factor later on in the game also. You can see the this fumble here by uh, Ricky, recovered again by Illinois. Again, they've got great field position. But your defense holds again. Great job by the defense. You know, Ricky's not a fumbler. I mean, some backs are known to have that problem. It just was one of those nights that it didn't happen that way. And, but our defense responded right here. That's the first play out. And you can always, they can come out sometimes with the daubers down when you turn it over two consecutive times in a row, way deep in your territory. But they came out to make a statement. So you hold Illinois to a field goal attempt. It is good. And uh, that's it for the highlights in the second quarter. All right, we've had the appetizer of the first two quarters. Illinois has got that 12-point halftime lead. Now it's time to get into the full course here, the third and the fourth quarter. As we enter the third period of play and go to the highlights, the Ducks trailing. But immediately, this was a big series for your team because not only did you move the ball and put it in the end zone, you got the crowd back into the game. We talked about it. Ryan held this one and let uh, Christian clear the backside, sort of a throwback type thing. And then a lot of it's Christian McElmore making the big play, getting it down and scoring territory. We talked at halftime in the locker room about the fact that we needed to have a drive. We needed to score. We needed two touchdowns minimum. And the nice thing is Ryan just steps up here at the end. I thought somebody was going to get to him, but he stepped up, released the ball, perfect throw. Puts Christian in stride, and that helped. And I think he continues for about a 66-yard gain, which is a nice job. Nice to see him back and healthy, obviously being ready to contribute full go. Hit a big night. Five receptions, 147 yards. Well, you didn't waste a whole lot of time after the Illini called timeout. Ricky Whittle again, almost untouched into the end zone. Great job. It's a play that we had set up off of our other looks. Uh, you see our guard pulling in there. see the fullback coming out. Great block by Aaron Jelks. Moves the pile. Uh, Ricky again untouched into that end zone. Big play and again, a, a, an emotional lift for all of us, at least for the time being. <laughs> Ricky this year looks like he's, uh, I mean, he's always been a strong, powerful runner, but it looks like he's picking his holes and picking the right time to accelerate this year. He, he's smoother, and I think it's a combination of the flexibility and just, just practice uh, and repetition. There's a nice play action pass to Doc, Josh. We were playing a two deep zone. Here a lot of the time we took a play action and snuck him down the middle. Again, nice throw by Ryan, allows it to open up. Uh, great catch by Josh, and then get up the field. 
gain of 23 yards after a running play that did not gain any yardage. Again, uh, this was a, a pump play where we're trying to pump and get the same tight end down the seam. He gets hit just as he delivers the ball. Uh, again, very difficult. Uh, our protection had to be better. It's difficult at times to hold the ball long enough to get the pump play working. This was a pretty good stand here by your defense. This is a great stand. Uh, you know, I, Dan Green, I, I've talked about it. I believe that they're alive and well. I think they showed it again last night. They are a force to be reckoned with. And uh, it's a great goal line stand by the entire group. So this is a fourth down coming up. Fourth and goal. They only needed about three inches. And we actually stop him. We don't wrap up. And he allows him to slide off and fall in the end zone, which is discouraging. I, I was in. You know, the other thing we did, though, twice we kept down the end zone on two-point plays, which was the difference in the ball game. And ultimately, those plays are, are gigantic. We'll take a look at this two-point conversion from down low. Coming right at you. Yeah, this is a quarterback run option. And again, I think Kenny Wheaton's out here forcing it. Uh, does a nice job. Gets some help. No, he doesn't get any help. Actually, he does it by himself. But uh, everybody else strung it out well enough to allow him to make that play. And if he doesn't stay on his feet there, then that guy scores. Johnson's exactly. in for two. Now, explain this one for you. I mean, on the they call, uh, well, I guess it's later in the game, the touchback. Here's David Crump. Hit a couple of nice run backs. David Crump hit it up there well. He broke this one. I thought, keep going. The guy caught him from behind. We wore out their kickers. Finally, he kicked one we could return. Them, so, you know. <laughs> but you come right back. And, and I think this is the sign of, of a championship caliber team is that you had gotten a great emotional burst to start the half, and then you had disaster, but you continued to come back. Yeah, we, we did not get down. There wasn't a finger pointing on the sideline. The, the defense was super. Uh, and again, we come back here with a big play to Chris again to start off. Uh, nice run after catch by him. Perfect throw by Ryan. Gain of 30, first down. Ball at the Illini 43. That little screen to Ricky. Big play. Big play. This is a play, and again, this looks like the one against Washington State a couple years ago. Same play with a different, different formation. He breaks it, though. Does a great job here. Ryan, perfect pass again. Hit him on strike coming back in. Great block there by Josh. Uh, the lineman coming down, and it's all Ricky. Again, uh, Eric Reed down there making a block. Ricky pulled through that one. I was hoping it scored right there, but uh, it was a great play. So you got the ball uh, deep at the six after a personal foul penalty as well. Ricky picking his way, almost gets in. Almost in. Same play we scored on the, the time before, just the other direction. Then we give it to the big fellow in the backfield, get a good push from the line. Aaron Jelt scoring his first touchdown. You can see that push on the, there's nobody there really. <laughs> It's a great job by our line. Great job. And Aaron at 250 can move the pile. Yeah, he can move it. Two-point conversion. Never really had a chance to have this pretty well defended. Did not have a chance. They ran sort of an exit stunt where the D lineman goes out into the screen area. It made it very difficult. So they come back. They try a field goal, and it is again blocked by BJ. Great you job. get it back, but unfortunately, disaster here near the end of the quarter. And that, that's, uh, that's a hard thing to watch happen. Ricky just did not secure the ball once he had it and actually bounced it out with his own leg or pad. And uh, our defense, I think that was one of those momentary lapses there where the, the emotion was getting tough to sustain for them. Uh, the play before we lost Dante Lewis, on that play we lost Isaac Walker for the game with a, a concussion. Uh, hopefully they'll both be back. This is another... Uh, is that the two-point play? Yes, yes. which, uh, again, I, I can't say enough about how much that one play, those plays mean for this game. So you were down 19-7 to 7 at the uh, end of the half, and you're trailing here. Now, here's the... Uh, why was that a touchback? Well, the, the official claimed that it bounced untouched into the end zone. If it bounces in the end zone untouched, they can claim it down. And I, I argued that one. I said, it uh, bounced outside. Can he return it? He said no. So uh, I, I think they... I think it was a problem on that. <laughs> Jabri Hodge and J.C. Transfer are making a nice catch. Uh, play action pass, one that we've used before. Little slant. Nice catch there. Uh, again, full speed. I, I was hoping he'd break this. Almost did it. One sort of a shoestring tackle there. And we've got one final play in the quarter. This was almost a big play. This was a great throw. And Re just, just barely out of bounds. Yes, and I, and I actually I yelled at Crispin on that. He's a veteran receiver. He should know that, should have tapped those feet. I think he was excited, thought he was going to go with it. Well, until uh, midway through last year, the Ducks, uh, it had been a while since they had come from behind to, to win a game, and now you've done it, what, uh, five times out of the last eight games. It's becoming a habit.
Let's get into the fourth quarter. Illinois has the football. They've got a 31 to 20 lead, but this was a big series. On the first uh, series Illinois had in the fourth period, they only ran off 20 seconds off the clock. Yeah, and that, that, that helped us, obviously. Good pressure here from Mark Schmidt and DJ. They get him to run out of bounds. Anytime they do that at this point in the game, that's going to help us. We were behind. Um, obviously, make our life a little bit easier. It also looked like they had instructed Johnson after the turnover infested game they had against Michigan. Don't put the ball up for grabs and throw it into traffic and stuff. So he yes. just took the sack. No question. This is the same play we'd run earlier that uh, double out where it hit Josh, but now uh, we hit uh, Christian on the out. Come back. Big third down conversion there to Josh Wilcox. Josh has a habit of it's third and four, he'll get a third and four. If it's eight, we, he'll get eight. Ricky there cutting back. Nice job on the zone play. Again, delivering a blow, getting out of bounds too, which saves the clock. Also a little face mask. Yeah, it seemed uh, Illinois lost a little poise at the end of the game. Several penalties, and again, uh, I, I was very proud of our people because we seemed to, to get better as it went along and never lost that poise in that regard. You can see the hand on the mask there, so another couple of yards. This is a second and goal from the three. Great job by Ricky. Again, following the block and inside the zone play. They're setting it up. Great push from the interior line there. Uh, Mark Gregg, Dave Weber, the whole crew. Now you go for two. Go for two. This is uh, a rub play, we call it. Uh, they played it zone, and, and uh, Ryan floated the ball over to Dan Ricketts. Great throw, great catch. Uh, perfect adjustment to the way they played the replay itself. Puts it in the corner, right over the top of the other guy. Great job. Big play because you are now within three points. 31, 28, plenty of time left to go in this game. The defense is kind of take over a little bit here. A nice job. Great job by Jaya there. Filling outside. Basically giving the guy nowhere to go. Yeah, this Pitch was on a third block. and one. That's a great individual effort. Ducks get it back, unfortunately, unable to move the ball. And then a big play here. The punt by Bidwell. And uh, there's a little contact here at the end. Illinois has called for a personal foul, 15 yards for arguing on the sidelines. So that pushes the ball back deep into Illinois territory. It's a second and eighth play from the Illini 17 right here. It's a, this is a great play. Uh, Jaya Figueres comes off the edge, not only strips the quarterback, but catches or recovers the fumble in the end zone for the touchdown. And that is our play of the day. We're in what we call our Falcon group, and we've got five DBs in the game. We bring uh, Jeremy Asher over here off the edge. What we're doing is hitting all the inside gaps, and we're playing man-to-man -man with the free safety coming up. Jaya came off. They were running a play action. Guard was coming out to block him. He beat that block, made the tackle here, stripped the ball, and again, got the ball in the end zone. It, everybody results, you know, that play is everybody working very hard. Jaya does a great job here coming off. You can see it again probably later on, but he takes it, makes a play on his own. So let's take a look at it, not once, but twice. It's worth seeing twice. <laughs> Here's the high angle here, you see 22. Coming off, beats the guard's block, reaches out, hits the corner, strips the ball, gets up, scrambles in the end zone, he and Des Bird, and Des lays on top of him, make sure he's got it, great play. And let's look at it from down low. Again, great pressure inside too. One of the things that forced him out was the fact that uh, Dez is coming untouched inside. Uh, they did not block back on him, and so he's got a chance to make that same play, too. Teamwork, gang green. So now you're up by three points. The extra point was no good, just to add to the drama of this game. And at this point, I mean, the house is rocking. Gang green really just, I mean, they take it to a different level here. Uh, Jeremy Asher, one of his 18 tackles right there with a lot of help, but uh, it was great. And the, the extra point, by the way, was a high snap. That young man, pretty tough situation to come in and do that, but Josh Smith did a great job overall, and the defense, again, took over right here. I don't even know how the Illini heard the snap count. This was a little scary. The great play by Kenny Wheaton, Derek Barnes, Eugene Jackson, reading that screen, getting there in a hurry. You can see, you can see uh, Jeremy coming in, pressuring the quarterback, making the high throw, and then Kenny making the sure tackle with a lot of help. So a third down and 11. Sort of a play action, sort of a maximum protection to get as much 
as they can in. Two-man route, and we get them. We got great coverage down the field. Derek Barnes on the sack. You can see here, this play fake is designed to sort of hold the backers. They're in a maximum protection scheme, blocking eight people, and our guys, through sheer force of will and effort, get there. Plus, we got the guys covered down the field. So, the Illini forced to punt. You get it back. This was third down. This is the bad matchup that we don't like to see. We, we also did a maximum protection, but that matchup of Ricky on Kevin Hardy is not a good one. Ricky atoned for not for missing him by getting the fumble back, which is key play. Big punt by Josh Bidwell. Best punt of the day for him. Obviously a great time to do it. Now, Illinois has no timeouts. They need a field goal to tie, but they wouldn't get anything on this series. Again, good pressure. Forces him to make the air and throw. Bring in Kenny off the corner again. Good coverage there by Brian Collins. Forced into action when, uh, when Isaac Walker was knocked out. Pressure by Des Bird. Overthrowing a little bit. Kenny Wheaton right there. Fourth down. Big, big play. They run that same screen, and I'll tell you what, they set up pretty well, but the pass was thrown behind him. I think we had him rattled by that point. That's a big play. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of UCLA's victory over BYU. They had to come and uh, overcome some adversity, too. This is uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. No, not the basketball player. Formerly Sharmon Shaw. Changed his name. Great running back. He's a great running back. He was the leading rusher in the conference last year. They have a great offensive line that uh, I know against Miami opened up gaping holes. And they're, they're a great team, great potential. They have the leading receiver also catching the ball here. And they're playing with a freshman quarterback, Cade McNown from Westland, Oregon, and he's doing a good job for them. As I understand, their Ryan Fien, their starter, is out, and we will see Cade McNown this week. You recruited McNown, a left-hander, great athlete, uh, also a track star as well, and uh, a left-hander, as you can see, and pretty good poise. Uh, they raved about him in their fall scrimmages and also in their victory against BYU. Good poise. We, we got uh, one of the top quarterbacks in the state of Oregon. We'd like to have both of them, but we didn't get them. All righty. So the Bruins will be tough. You go to the Rose Bowl. Uh, it's kind of ironic that you start the Pac-10 season where you finished last year. You had some unfinished business. I know that's the feeling on this team as you open the conference this year. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's a great opportunity. The Pac-10 race starts here, and uh, it starts where we left off last season. And I think our players are very excited about that opportunity. Certainly we're both 2-0, and oh, and uh, it's a big showdown. And I, I don't mind going on the road. We played there. Our kids feel comfortable there. Your team must like adversity. <laughs> first two games you faced plenty of it it's hard to imagine facing more adversity but uh, I know you want to clean some things up especially the turnover department because against UCLA you probably can't get away with that no we cannot get away with that against any football team we were very fortunate last night we won basically due to resolve of this football team and uh, we can't put our defense in that situation we can't give up field position or turn the ball over or we we won't have much of a chance to win many games you know, we didn't talk a whole lot about UCLA defensively, but they return a number of starters. You know, we thought we saw, you know, the best college outside linebackers in the country with Hardy and Simeon Rice. Donnie Edwards isn't too far behind, and so he'll be a chore for the Ducks to handle on defense. Well, that wraps it up for this week. It's been fun. It's been exciting. It's a thrill a minute here on this coach's show and for the games this year. It's been great. We'll join you next week from the Rose Bowl. Until then, for the coach, I'm Todd McKim. Thanks for joining us. So long, everybody.